of it, so I'm not volunteering for it. I would, but I am. I would want to come to the writers and see a lot of people, respected journalists you've had. We're in Soma, we're in South Park. This is an extremely desirable location to live in. You can see like rents around here is ridiculous. It's very hard to find housing. Congrats, well, I'm just now meeting you. Good to finally meet you. Yeah. Great Nicholas, how are you? Well, that on. was good timing. The housing, it's the biggest, it's the problem of our generation. Building traditional homes is not the only way to solve housing. In fact, that's the wrong way to solve it. What we need to solve housing, use the space much, much, much more efficiently. I haven't staged the space, so. So yeah, this is Sebastian's home. So this looks like, you know, it's just a living room. And you know, like when he's, when he's working, it, there's a projector, it like hangs out, watches TV. And then there's a whole bedroom that's in the ceiling. All his storage, his closets, all his stuff is put away. So yeah, in the, in the night it becomes a bed. I don't know if he's made the bed, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, and ceilings, this really invisible space and no one's looking at the ceiling. You know, once it's, once it's down, it's a, it's a queen bed. It's a really good queen bed. Could the mechanism go up with a person inside? No, it, ca it cannot. So we have various ways of sensing. So there is uh, each one of these have a load cell that's constantly measuring load on it. And our motor itself measures torque and we've capped it. Just electromechanically, it's incapable of lifting a bed, mattress, bedding, and anything on top. So all this stuff gets stored. You can accessorize, based, like let's say you have book storage or you have uh, clothes, for example, all his clothes are, yeah, we leave stored here. This is a dresser with all the t-shirts inside. And, uh, <laughs> and kind of the interesting thing is if I'm storing something new, there are sensors in the ceiling that photo catalog every object that you store. So when I put something away, so let's say um, day mode. So when you leave, send it away, just clears your room. None of your anxiety inducing clutter is around. It's just disappear yet. It's all searchable. I put my smartphone in there. It knows it's my black smartphone, so I don't have to search for it, you know. And you don't have to type it in. It uses deep learning stacks to understand what exactly you've stored. Labeled box that got stored in there. So it only captions like things that as it went in, right? And you can search, for example, I know I have this coaxial cable. As he had stored it, it had captioned it. So. There's the cable over there. Over time, we gather the home inventory and it gets more and more and more and more accurate to a point where I'm like, hey, what have I not touched in the last 60 days? You haven't touched your tennis racket. You haven't played tennis all year, get rid of it. Oh, you need to go swimming. Your swimming trunks are just sitting there. You know, you can create these nudges. It becomes this Marie Kondo in the ceiling that's, that's constantly taking care of in inventory, telling you what you're using, what you're not using. There's like a lot of things that we lose in the home that's just buried, right? And things that we constantly use are sitting out on our surfaces, which are anxiety inducing. Versus you walk in, it's just a calm living space. I mean, this is, this is how he lives. I mean, he has very little stuff sitting outside. Uh, you can see all his stuff is there. It's just part of furniture. Like today to add a room, you need to get permits and it's a major process to add a room versus we come and add a whole room and all the storage, everything that you need, plus sensors, lights, everything within an hour. So we come in and out and in an hour you have a full bedroom in the ceiling. So this is a co-living space, which means that's all the personal private space that uh, as a resident that you get. And there's a lot of common space that the building offers. 
like common bathroom showers. There's another bathroom shower, you know, uh, kitchen. There's a beautiful uh, back patio too. You, I think uh, Star City, they're great partners and their mission kind of lines up. Their mission is to make cities accessible for everyone. Here's a beautiful patio down here. Our mission is to make space for what matters. The problem with small footprint living is the small, like everything feels small. It's like micro kitchen, micro desk, micro bed. My, I think it's a very analog, very manual and very not exciting way to live. So we unlock basically a platform, right? Ceilings literally in a new space. As long as you're thoughtful about the design, you can, you can double up, triple up, quadruple up the axis. In our case, we at least triple the utility of the space within the same footprint. Because there is the personal space, you do need a lot of personal space. I don't want to have a guest room that's going to be sitting there for three weeks in the month. We have guests. Even closet, you go in to pick up your t-shirt. Rest of the time you're paying heating, cooling, mortgage, taxes, insurance. Hi there. Clear my room. Okay. So we did some ground up study of a bunch of apartment. Turns out between 30 to 40% of the space is just access space, access of bed, access of dresser. For example, this, uh, where this is coming down is access for the closet or this is also access for the bed. Like we've tripled up like this utilization there and there's stuff underneath. So you, you'd be surprised how much space in access, hallways, doorways, just like closet, you open the door, you need all the space for the door and that you cannot block the door, like there are fire hazards, you know, things like that. So you end up losing a lot of space in access, which you can totally get rid of. You know, same space becomes a closet, right? So same space becomes a dresser. And this acts like I'm talking to you where I'm like a dresser exists, right? I'm talking like I'm, the access space is where the dresser is and I can be hanging out where the bed is. So you won't be heating, cooling, mortgage, taxes, insurance and on, on a two dimensional metric, you'll actually use the space better. So when it senses like uh, objects in the path, it gives me a bit of a warning. Uh, so. So, you know, for example, people might say, oh, this is not enough closet space for me. And because we are on this grid system, we can just add these modules as you need them. So it's just the same. Everything works off of the same grid. So you can just add more closet. You can say, oh, I don't need as much closet. I need more shoe rack and we can just like swap out. I need a king bed. You can just swap that out. So, and it changes with your life too, you know. So let's say you moved in with your partner then suddenly your storage needs go up, your uh, number of people you entertain goes up. And when you have kids, it's an explosion, right? The first shipment was in my home and I have uh, five and a three year old. So it gets abused a lot. Did it start in your garage? Bedroom? Basically, yes. I wanted to show that we don't need more rooms, we just need to use the rooms we have better. These are mostly in the clothes bin, so you can see mostly clothes. Yeah, you can search through that. Is it going to do a similar thing with food and other items? Uh, sure, basically it's trained with a bunch of household items and we keep improving the training. Let me actually get my phone back. Uh, so yeah, our, our system's been like the AI of like learning, understanding what is stored, what is not, it becomes kind of magical um, over time. Then you can tie it to your calendar, tie it to the weather, you know, I'm on the way out and it's sunny out. 
it'll recommend where your flip flops or whatever. You know, it just like becomes part of your like home butler. We call it. How about uh, I want to keep my privacy? Is there going to be a camera in the whole system that could just capture something happening in the room? So the, there is no camera in the room, right? No, the, the, the sensors are it's like edge sensors. They're only looking at local obstructions and objects under the uh, units that are moving. The camera is only for the objects that are being stored and retrieved. And that is only taking a picture of the object. And even that is an opt-in. It's opt-in to do the inventory. And your data, you own your data, right? So let me optimize my inventory. What do I need to get rid of? What do I constantly use that needs replenishment? So that data is yours. And you opt in for any of these services. And there's no, the sensors that's in the room, it's all edge, which means none of the data is leaving the room. So these sensors are basically, it won't look like this. And you guys are getting like behind the scenes view of this, <laughs> but it's basically like a laser based sensor that's looking at a whole grid, but it's not looking at any vision. It's like a garage door sensor with like dense points all around the room, right? I bring it down, it just like uh, warrants you. But even if it's moving and I jump in the way, there. There. So it just senses and pauses. You don't have to, um, you know, it just knows like there is some obstruction underneath. And once it's clear, it just proceeds on by itself. You don't have to like touch another button. So let's say you come home really tired and for some reason there is no electricity in the building. So what's your... Right. So there is no manual override that you can like pull it down and crank it. But because it's all low voltage, if the building does not have a backup, we ship a battery that you get a few cycles out of. It's all running on low voltage. So having a backup battery is just like... So you thought slap. about that? Yep. Could I ask you why this uh, particular unit was able to go down having some things underneath? It's just because it's going to stop higher up? And right. Then... When we think about design, we think about it kind of like in ergonomic and how low they come is adjusted based on how comfortable it is for the person resident to get it. So, you, you know, it's designed so you, I can easily access every part of this. Even as a 95th percentile small woman, you should be able to reach every part of it and still store all your stuff as needed. You know, it's also much more friendly for people with disabilities or people who are kids. And I can log, I can say, oh, that cabinet is medicine cabinet. Kids can get in there, put a password. So the energy bill. How you can think about energy is when it's fully loaded and we're moving it up. Because when it's coming down, it's gravity is helping the situation. When it's fully loaded and it's going up, it's like running like a couple hair dryers on in full heat. That only happens for like six to eight seconds. But you're saving energy bill on a heating, cooling a whole room. Actually, freeing up the wall is actually interesting. For example, he's been using this for a projector and a previous resident had a bunch of art hanging here. Freeing up the wall is actually super valuable to how you think about home. Walls become like a place of expression and you can have your surfboard and your guitar and that hangs out in your room. And things that you don't want to get out into the a new space where ceiling literally is a disappearing space, like invisible. We free up, like, we, you can, it's funny, like, you can obnoxiously place the bed where you want it because it's no longer connected. You can, do, like, oh, I have a great view. I want to sleep with that view. You can, like, keep the bed right there because it gives you this flexibility of not being tethered anywhere. You can have a kitchen, which is basically a nice open platform for you to, like, work surface. And then all your kitchen storage is in the ceiling. You can drop walls that become like sleeping coves, like we drop these screens that become sleeping coves. 
<laughs> so do you think the next step is similar to in the future like a Rubik cube? Yeah, I think so there will be like a way to for you to like configure what you need. So basically you can scan your room, understand, okay, like looks like you have this much clothes, this much shoes, this much books, this much stuff, this much electronics, and you can create a bunch of configurations that work for your home. Yeah. The word robot has a lot of kind of like scary connotations. In, in the Western culture, there's this whole like Skynet and the fear of machines and the story to tell here is not the tech. The story is not, if we do this right, you will not notice our product. We were working on various ways of interacting where you don't even touch the screen or anything, right? It contextually understands it's nighttime, you're, it's, you come in, it's bedroom. So do you think that after 100 years since the Murphy bed, there was a moment you sort of... Has it been 100 years? Perhaps. I'm pretty sure it's About some, that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, I, the my Sears... My last name's Murthy, so we call it Murthy bed as a joke. <laughs> yeah.